I don't know how you want to start. I'm Mo, I'm Seth. I'm the production designer. I'm Esther, the costume designer. Uh, I'm Garrett, the technical consultant and uh, former Ashley. <laughs> uh, yeah, where do I start on this? This is amazing. Yeah. So you fall more than shaping one of the most beautiful shows on television. Uh, thank you, Lisa. Thank you. I think it might be accurately portrayed. Um, what do you hope audiences take away as far as like that effort, or what are you hoping audiences notice the most as far as authenticity in this show? Maybe, maybe I'll, I start, or you want to start? Maybe we'll, we'll switch this up. You want you? So I, have a, I got an answer for this one. All right. Um, what I hope is, so they're going to see, in the, and now that we're in season four, we've gone way beyond what we've actually done. We're on Mars, we're going after these asteroids, we got, you know, plasma drive engines and all, and all kinds of incredible things. So, so what I hope that the audience sees is like, oh yeah, okay, we don't, th these things are not real. We, we don't actually have these things. Uh, this technology has gone beyond, even though we're in 2003, we're still beyond where we are in 2023. So what I hope that they take away is, okay, I know we don't have these things, but we could, you know, and maybe we will soon. And so that's what I hope that they, they, they say like, oh, you know what? That looks like, I know it doesn't exist, but, but, but I, but it looks like, you know, it could exist. And that, that's, that's what I hope. They, I'm going to just go right over Garrett right now on a lap. <laughs> <laughs> and she's going to, I know, know and what she's going to, yes. Yeah. So what Garrett is saying is this is science-based science fiction. We want to make it as believable as possible so nobody falls out of the story. Nobody falls out when they're watching it. They look at it and they go, oh, yeah, I can relate to that. The diagrams on the whiteboard are real. The call numbers on the rockets, everything is des when we design the consoles on the rockets, we had help in designing them. You told us where the key switch would be, what it would look like. So everything's been vetted and we have all kinds of, we feel confident about what we're showing that the audience will fall into this and then they'll go with this, the rest of the story, what make the story so compelling. That's the key to this show. And I think certainly for costumes, we've had that same approach of, you know, sort of the realist look we can get, um, the sort of the most believable spacesuit you know in terms of um the historical um point that we're at 2003 um the suit is not a futuristic suit it is the 2003 suit with a little bit more bells and whistles because we're a little further ahead but i still you know i still wanted it to be believable for our audience the other the other interesting thing about our our show is um Creating that believability is about the audience members feeling like they can be part of that world. Um, I think our trailer was a wonderful example of what is sort of behind our intention, which is, yes, you too can be part of this space journey. So I'm just going to add one quick little thing on top of her. I know you guys have questions, and that is... Her spacesuit was so good that NASA just invited her to help design a space suit for them. Been cheating, <laughs> uh, cheating a little bit, but it's a question. It's, it's true. They talk about life imitating art. You, yeah. Here you are creating this believable spacesuit, and then you have recent headlines about Prado. Yeah, charming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like NASA. Yeah, assist in designing our next generation spacesuit. Yes. So how, what is that like, knowing that you know, life is basically imitating? Yeah, it started to kind of do that, you know, it all just kind of building on one another. The thing about, the thing about um, inviting other sort of fashion brands into the mix, when you look at those fashion brands, they have a long history in creating garments. And that their technology, their pattern cut, cutting, their tailoring, it's it's highly advanced and they have a, a marvelous set of individuals working for them. They also have wonderful technologies in terms of, um, for well, funny, uh, rubber and glues and, you know, there's oh, yeah. all of that. So you can sort of key into all of that. Uh, my work with Axiom was the space cover. It wasn't the space suit. I know, I just cheated. You would have feeling. <laughs> 
Um, and then it'll come out and I guess in the next couple of months, I designed their uh, Axiom's next um, flight suit, which will be, they'll be, the astronauts will be wearing them for the Artemis three mission. In space, in the spaceship. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's, it's that's such a, it's game. really, you know, and for me, it was just sort of an amazing experience. Uh, <laughs> an amazing experience to uh, work for our show, right? Find myself in the headquarters of Axiom in Houston, talking with the head engineers about the same sort of stuff we talk about, which was insane to me. It was. You know, we're having this conversation about helmets, space helmets and lighting. And I'm like, oh my God, I just spent, you know, four weeks in constant conversation with Matt and Ben about how to light, you know. And so it just, it was really striking, really striking. And I, it, it made me think that, you know, our show in its pursuit or realism, right? It's getting a little ahead of the curve. It's like, <laughs> we're, we're kind of there. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. the other thing about our show, I don't know if you're familiar, but we, our actors, our, our costumes often are festooned with patches. So patches are very important in this uh, aerospace because it, it donates, it says about the mission that's being, yeah. it's, it's also rank and it's country. So that's why the whole patch thing is very, very important. And again, I found myself in the offices of Axiom discussing at length. Where to put the patches, yeah. It's all about the patches. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, again, it's like, oh, it blows your mind. And I, you know, I'm sort of trying not to look like my mind is blown. But, but anyway, this makes sense. I can hear that you're also very, very passionate about this show. And it's fun to I'm curious, each of you, what was your favorite scene from this season? Whoa. Well, we got to be careful there because we can't talk about specific <laughs> scenes. Or say, can you say, oh, this episode was my favorite episode like what well you know he's wow uh well i'm just gonna say right away that the thing that you're gonna see today is amazing absolutely amazing could be on a huge screen is so interesting and so full of detail and um it encompasses the work of all of us very thoroughly because the spaceship and the asteroid and everything that you see, I could show you on my phone the illustrations that were created. The astronauts out there in space and what they're utilizing, she supply. I mean, it's all there. So I can't tell you it's the favorite scene, but I can say that I found it extremely thrilling to see that right off the bat. Yeah. I, you know, I think there's not that we have a formula or anything, but there's, there is a certain pattern. To the to the show where in every season episode one and episode and the final the finale typically have the most action right the most excitement you always start with a bang and with a bang and and, and the, I gotta say this season is kind of no different uh, that's not a spoiler right yeah uh, and um, and so yeah like you know uh, I, I, so this what you're gonna see tonight episode one is is definitely one of my favorites of, of season four. Because it does have a bunch of really awesome action. There's some really cool tech and some amazing sets and some great suits. And you are going to see it all t tonight. And I, and I think episode one might might be my favorite. You're going to see the inside of a spaceship. That I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say, because I've worked on other sci-fi as well, is the best, I think, that's out there. It's really convincing. Really, really. It's as good as any movie. I really think so. It's good for how we all... Oh, you've already seen it. Yeah, seen so, it. Yeah. so, oh, okay. Okay, great, 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 okay, yeah. great, great, great. All right. And I was going to say, you know, obviously, you know, we all love nostalgia. It's set in 2003 and been through the decades. And obviously, it must be an absolute playground for you to work on, like, Mars and, like, the living situations and whatnot. What is that for you guys? Like, you know, following what he said earlier about this beautiful show, it's just the imagination is just, like, on screen and it really is all three you guys were hanging think to create that like well, how how much fun is that to kind of have like a blank canvas just go and it, it's super fun i remember when i the first time i came to set before we started shooting just to check out his sets and i and i walked through happy valley this scale of it the detail i i, I was so blown away 
you know, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the, uh, I, I keep being afraid I give a spoiler, but the, but the episode one is the, the, that when you first enter Happy Valley, that area was full scale and just, I walked into there, I was like, oh my God, this is fantastic. I really wish we can have this on Mars like now. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a whole lot of fun. There was, there was some interesting challenges too about that whole habitat environment in terms of costuming. You know, we had the uniforms about Helios workers and then we had our astronauts and, you know, creating yeah. an athlete. It was sort of creating that, but also uh, giving our characters their own sort of personalities within the context of a uniform. Hard to do. Yeah. <laughs> but the other thing, and we talked about this before, you know, the, the thing about this season, we really talk about, the, you know, we can advance technology, we can hope for a social change for the better, and we've talked about, we've, we've dealt with those issues in seasons one, two, and three. Season four, we talked about, at the, fun, at the end of the day, we're still human beings, and human beings are tribal species. And, uh, and, and what we explore in season four is now we have an expansion of the tribes, because now we have humans on Mars and Earth, and even on Mars, we have different tribes. And I love how you communicate that so clearly with the costumes, right? The costumes really put everybody in their place, and you can see who's on what side very clearly uh, by who's wearing what patch. Again, it's, it's all about the patches, yeah. right? Yeah. And we'll just say, because I don't know, we don't see sublevel at all, right, in episode one, but there's definitely a separation, physical separation as well. Who gets the cool quarters and who doesn't have the cool quarters. It's Sounds familiar. <laughs> like you, you see some a bunch of people have to share and some people get their own and yeah so the big difference. Yeah. That's yep. great. We're gonna wrap. You know, thank you, Jen. You guys, you get enough. I hear. You didn't get to ask that name, but just we were doing all the talking. <laughs>